gentle marketers, welcome back to season 11 of the Gentle Business Revolution podcast, a show where we talk about marketing your business by disrupting the current hypey marketing paradigm and changing it to a gentler approach, one that's based on empathy and kindness. I'm Sarah Nakroche, as always, your host here, and you're listening to episode 80. Eight, I think. Let me double check. Yeah, 88. This time a solo episode where I talk about this idea of the future us. So do you know that you're in the right place here if you are a heart-centered entrepreneur or change maker who is looking for a different, a better way to market your business Or you might also be a marketing impact pioneer, so someone who's working in an organization who does business for good. If you're a regular here, you know that I'm organizing the conversations around the seven Ps of the gentle marketing mandala. And if you're new here, yay, welcome. And maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. You can download your one-page marketing plan with the gentle marketing version of the seven Ps of marketing at sarahsanacroche.com forward slash one page. That's the number one and then page. This comes with seven email prompts to really help you reflect on these different P's and then implement. So as I mentioned today, I want to talk to you about this idea of the future us. So during this pandemic, it was in 2020, I was introduced to Yancey Strickler and his Bento Society. If you're on my newsletter, then you've heard me talk about this in one of the Saturday Sarah Suggests newsletters before. So the Bento Society is a global community that is very much in alignment with my values. And I've been attending these weekly Sunday calls regularly. So Bento, so Yancey came up with this term, and apparently it's an acronym for Beyond Near-Term Orientation, and it serves as a wider lens for what's valuable and in our self-interest. It's a simple tool for making decisions aligned with our values and goals, looking at ourselves, others, and taking time into consideration. If you go to the show notes. So sarasanacroche.com forward slash GBR 88. I make sure to post a picture of the bento because maybe you've heard this term bento before. And <laughs> me, it made me remember the lunch boxes I had to pack for my kids when we were living in California. And so they had these bento boxes where you know, there's different quarters and that you pack, you know, veggies and, and carbos and, and dessert all into that box. And, and it's actually a Japanese word. And it comes from there. It comes from this idea of having these different compartments in, I believe, a lunchbox. Yeah, you might have to double check, but that's, that's I think, what the idea is. And so the the really the tool that Yancey created is based on that concept of the bento, meaning that there's different compartments. And it will really help if you see it, because I'm going to explain it now, but it, it just helps to have it visually in front of you. So again, the bento includes what we or I as an individual want and need right now. So Again, if you think of the bento, it has four different compartments and the bottom left is the now me. So that's where you think about what do I need? What do I want right now? It's like, you know, the selfish me, what do I need and want? But it also makes space for the considerations of our future selves. So that's future me and that's the bottom right quadrant. The people we rely on and who rely on us, that is uh, now us. So that's when we think about, you know, the people who are close to us, the people who matter, the people who love us and whom we love. So that's the now us quadrant and that's the top left and even the next generation. So that's the future us. So that's the top right quadrant. All of these spaces impact us and are impacted by us. So that the bento will really help reveal the paths that are most aligned with who you are. So as we are 
still going through the this global pandemic and the aftermath, I think about the future us a lot, or even, you know, generations after that, what will their future look like? What will their life look like? What will matter to them? What will business look like? What will it be like to grow up in a future generation? In a small group of fellow seekers, uh, we call ourselves the Elevation Collective, we take turns in asking beautiful questions. According to David White, a beautiful question can't be answered with a strategic mind. It's a lived question, a question we experience, and one that can reorient our trajectory or our horizon. It takes us from one set of attention or perception into a reoriented possibility question. So that's the definition of a beautiful question. And so when it was my turn to ask the question, here's what I ask. It's actually a whole set of questions. So I said, think back to when you were seven years old. Who were you? What delighted you? Have you given yourself permission to be the closest version of that child in your everyday life life now, in your business? What have you overlooked? And now think about the future and imagine a seven-year-old a few generations from today. How would you like this child's life to look like? And how can the work you do impact this child's life. I'm going to give you a moment to just kind of go into both directions. First of all, the past, who you were at seven years old, what kind of memories come up, and then project yourself to the future and how you would like the seven-year-old from the future, how you would like their life to look like. So in the Elevation Collective, we then took turns sharing what came up for each of us. And for example, my friend Jean shared a beautiful memory from his family vacations at the beach and how he remembered clearly how all the adults in his life were truly themselves during these summer breaks. They were free from the hustle and grind and took the time to be in the present, to be with the children and kind of like they found their way back to this playful version of themselves. I also shared memories from my childhood growing up in the Colombina, the community my parents and their friends created and where we co-lived for 15 years. When we imagine then a seven-year-old child in a future generation We wanted this child to be surrounded by people he loves and who love him, surrounded by nature. We wanted this girl to grow up with good food, enough food, no matter which part of the world she was born in. So asking ourselves those questions helps us see a purpose in our work that is bigger than ourselves, that goes way beyond building wealth for our own needs. Obviously, that comes first, but as gentle and wise souls, that's often not enough for us. And so that's why I really like the bento idea from Yancey so much. In a world where most masterminds talk about how to do more, get more, or be more, the bento society takes it to another level. And each week, we can use this tool to think about, yes, what matters to us, what we need right now, what we need to focus on in order to become this person that we want to be in the future. But we also extend that reflection to the future us, but then also, you know, beyond that, the like future generations. So clearly we make decisions that don't only involve our own needs, but they also involve future generations' needs. So that means we we pay attention to things that matter, to things that make this planet really a better place to live, even when we're not around anymore. 
So if you're curious about the tool itself, again, check out the show notes, sarasanacroce.com forward slash GBR88, or go directly to bentoism.org to find out more about Yancey's community. We call ourselves the Bentoists. So that's a community, again, that meets at least once a week. It's really community-driven. And what I like is that it does have a, a, a global feel to it, even if for now there is still kind of a majority of Northern Americans represented. But definitely check it out, bentoism.org. And if you're looking for a blend of business, marketing, and bentoism, then maybe our own community, the Gentle Business Circle, is a good fit for you. Besides very pragmatic business information, we also hold space for the human connection, the doing and the being, and ask ourselves these questions, well, what about the future us? So rather than teaching, I will be sharing my know-how, point of view, tools, ideas, etc., based on 13 years of running an online business. And it also really brings the know-how of all the members, since everyone in the circle has a unique expertise that can be tapped into. That's what I love so much. It really reminds me of those meetings at the Columbina where the the adults, uh, the, the adults in my life back then, they came together in the circle and every opinion counted. And so that's really what I'm trying to model in the gentle business circle. We create something new and different, a modern leadership model that's focused on the inclusion of everyone's unique life and business experience. So more than anything, think of the circle as a safe container for vulnerable conversations around life, business, and marketing. You can sign up at sarasnacroce.com forward slash circle and choose the monthly price that feels good to you and suits your current budget. I'm still uh, beta testing this idea of a pay what feels good model. Ideally, if you can pay $20 uh, per month, That uh, is what I think it's worth. And it also helps me cover the cost of running it as well as providing this podcast. But there's also no shame in picking the lower level if that's where you're at at the moment. So check it out, sarasanacroce.com forward slash circle. And next Friday, I'm talking to my friend Leslie Martian about self-love. And it fits under the second P of the gentle marketing mandala that stands for personal power. Let's be the change we want to see in the world. Speak to you next week.